Hello, today I'm going to take you on a journey back in time to see some of the sewing and embroidery things that belonged to my gran. So I hope you enjoy this journey. This is a crochet mat that my gran made which now lives in a frame on the wall in my house and it is so fine and so delicate, so intricate. It's crocheted with just cotton that you would normally sew with. Um, I think this is truly her masterpiece. She also did a big tablecloth, but in yellow, but with the same design. I just think this is wonderful. This is some embroidery of my grand's. We weren't sure if it was definitely her stitches, but after close examination, we're pretty sure it is. And I turned this into a mini quilt by adding some Liberty fabric. And I showed this on my previous video. It's now hanging up in my sewing room. So this is the box where I keep a lot of her things. So let's go inside and have a look what's in there. So first of all, we've got this lovely tin which used to be a tin of chocolates and inside you can see that there are lots and lots of vintage buttons in there that she's collected over a really long time. So they're really nice to have. She also kept a lot of threads and this is something people did a lot during the war. They didn't throw things away, they made use of them as much as possible and reuse things which I think is an attitude that is coming back into modern day. We don't want to waste things and I, I think that's a really good practice to have. She also has, this, these are some small embroideries just partly done that were put on with a transfer and here you can see some applique. So different coloured linen pieces appliqued around the edge to make a dressing table mat. Here is another tablecloth. She really loved embroidering tablecloths and this one isn't finished. She's protected it by putting plastic on it and you can just see her stitches are absolutely beautiful. Um, I'd really like to pick this up and finish it one day. It's the sort of design that really appeals to me. One thing my gran did a lot of was keep small scraps of fabric as well as threads and I think that's where I get it from and why I like to use every tiny scrap. So here's some scraps of linen that were hers. She also collected embroidery transfers that you would apply to fabric with an iron and she does have quite a large collection of those and I'm so lucky that I'm now looking after the, those transfers. Here you can see another small tablecloth that she's already begun embroidering and she's done it with cross stitch, it's a cross stitch design, floral design, I think it's so pretty and I love how she's drawn the scalloped edge on with a pencil, it's not finished yet though. And here's another embroidery transfer, I love this one, it's absolutely beautiful, those roses and the floral alphabet, I just think it's absolutely stunning and I hope that one day I have time to give that one a go because I think it's just really, really pretty. I love this old needlework magazine. There are a few of these. This is where she got a lot of the embroidery transfers from. They were, they were either included with the magazine or she sent away for them. And I just love looking through old needlework magazines. I just find it so interesting to see the illustrations and you, we can learn so much about the past and so much needlework that's relevant to today as well. So that's a real treat and look at those, they're the dog transfers that are included with that issue. So that's really nice to have. And some more embroidery transfers, there are a lot, I've just picked out a few to show you but the designs are so pretty and I'd like to incorporate them into the things that I make. Maybe adding them to some patchwork could definitely be done. I love the fans and the butterflies in this one. It's got that real 50s vintage vibe. And that is such a beautiful dressing table set, isn't it? 
I have the exact same taste as she did. I love everything floral, particularly roses, and that was something that she really, really loved too. Now this one is super, super special because I know how much my gran absolutely loved this. She always talked about this embroidery really, really fondly and shared her memories of how a kind friend brought, bought her the embroidery silks that went with this. So this is the magazine that has the instructions in. I'm just looking through now and there they, there they are. Come to the fair. And it's a tablecloth, a circular design to go onto a tablecloth. And it's lovely to have all the instructions right there and the embroidery transfers are still there and still usable, which is really, really nice. But she's already applied them to her fabric and made a really good start on stitching it. So it's quite, quite an old piece, but it's in really, really good condition because she's kept it pristine, all wrapped up carefully and you can see there her beautiful stitches. She loves stitching the dresses and the flowers and her stitches are so tiny and really impeccable and I just love this design too. So here's another piece of fabric with an embroidery design transferred onto it, all ready to be stitched. And it's a really, really pretty design, but as I'm looking at it, I'm thinking again about the Come to the Fair tablecloth. So I spread it out and had a look at it. You can really see here the circular design. And I'm looking at her beautiful stitches and thinking what a shame that she wasn't able to finish it. She did it when she was young and then put it away and treasured it and never got around to actually finishing it off. Maybe one of the reasons is that she didn't have the colours for the skin tones or the browns. All that's left, as you'll see in a minute, are the yellow, blue and red embroidery silks. Her stitches are really, really impeccable. They are perfectly neat. This is the back of the work and you can see, well, there are hardly any ends sticking up. It's so, so neat. Almost looks as good as the front. And here are her lazy daisy flowers. So it must be where I got it from and why I love them so much. But she did leave the pieces of this design out that she didn't like as much. So as I'm looking at it and thinking about it, I'm thinking maybe I should give it a go and finish it off, or at least make a start on finishing it off. But my stitches will never be as neat as hers, and it is a bit nerve-wracking to give that a go, but it's such a beautiful piece and a lovely design, and I know how much she loved it, and that means it so much to me and makes it such an important piece that I think, yeah, I'll give it a go. So I'm looking at it thinking, well, which bit shall I start with? And I decided that the carousel, there's one carousel where she's already begun to stitch it, and then there's another carousel that she hasn't started. So I'll use her one for reference. So I find the carousel that hasn't been stitched and have a look through the threads. And it's amazing, really, to think that this set of threads are over 70 years old and also the fabric and it's all as good as new. Nothing is faded, there's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. The thread feels lovely and soft, the colours are bright, vibrant and I think this will be lovely to stitch with. And of course the instructions are all there so have a little look through to check the colours and to just check what stitches are needed 
and it's great to have that there. So the merry-go-round's the bit I'm going to do. My gran actually did it differently to what the instructions say, which is really interesting. So I decide to give it a go and, oh my goodness, my hands are shaking. I'm so nervous. But I have to keep reminding myself that I can't ruin it because we can always unpick our stitches, can't we? And yes, I had to unpick my stitches. I decided to use a thinner embroidery needle and that was the way I could get mine to look more like hers. So I used a size 9 embroidery needle and it's quite small and sharp but just has a big enough eye to get the two strands of floss or embroidery thread through it. And there's no way that my stitches will ever look like hers. And I realised that it's really difficult to emulate someone else's stitches when you're restoring something like this. And in an ideal world, that would be my dream job, would be to learn how to restore embroideries and look at them from a historical point of view, a restoration point of view. I'd love to do that. So that's her stitches and mine are not too bad. <laughs> but with practice, I hope that I can get mine as neat as hers. But yeah, rest restoration of antique textiles would be a dream job of mine. <laughs> but I have a long way to go. I hope I can do this piece justice. It isn't going to be something that I will finish in a rush, that's for sure. She kept this her whole life. And I want to keep this piece for my whole life. And it really does speak to me in terms of slow stitching and taking my time and thinking of her, it's a really nice way to remember her and to think about the things that she loved. So I'm going to keep working on this. And although my stitches look nothing like hers, I am going to keep going with this project. Thank you for watching, take care, bye bye.